Welcome to my project on solar air heaters. I'm going to take you through a couple of the prototypes that I've made uh, and put on my off-grid house and showing you some of the design problems that I've had to overcome. Hey everybody, so it's uh, the middle of January. Solar air heaters are working great today. It's about minus 15 outside. And uh, these air heaters are pumping out 28 degree heat inside the house. There's the first prototype. It turned on first today. Here's the second prototype that's a little bit more shaded. And uh, it's working at around 27, 28 degrees. It's, uh, it's a fairly simple design. It's using four inch uh, dryer vent ducking and then it comes down these two tubes, comes across the bottom and then back up the other two tubes on the other side. And it's just a $40 sheet of glazing from Home Depot. It's all airtight. And essentially this space between here and the tubes is a greenhouse and then uh, the air moves through the tubes. So there's no air moving inside of this space, just through the tubes. Come on inside. So in here, the, the cold air goes in this side and then the hot air comes out over on this side. And it's all controlled by a temperature control unit that turns the whole unit on when it gets above uh, 24 degrees I think and so right now it's been consistently running uh, with the fan more or less at full speed for the last hour pumping out 27 degree air and using a total of 5 watts of energy to move all that so it's been great free heat on a warm sunny day in the middle of January so when I was designing these air heaters, I wanted to make sure that I was using materials that I could get at the local hardware store. So it's got the uh, pink insulation, a layer of aluminum uh, across the bottom, and then a 1x6 frame, and then aluminum all the way around the outside to create kind of a super clean air space. Then it is essentially got four inch dryer duct tubes that go through creating a bit of a radiator unit and the whole thing's tied together with screws and high heat silicone. Then the unit has to get brought out and installed onto the house so it's screwed onto the face of the house. In this case there's some one inch insulation that's actually helping to insulate the back of the air heater. And then I have to drill six inch holes through the house in between the studs to allow for the intake and the exit fan to move the air through the solar air heater. Uh, all of this means that these air heaters have to be kind of custom designed in order to fit their space. While I was installing this air heater on our kitchen, I had it laying sideways on the deck and I realized that I could fit another one underneath this solar panel and vent it into my really cold living room. So that inspired me to build a second solar air heater that had to be constructed to work horizontally and would move the air through a similar type of path as the first air heater but uh, would have a different kind of intake and exit port because of where it had to be located in the room. So essentially it had the same construction as the first one, but I had to create some different flow rates so that it didn't drag air across the unit too quickly uh, and made it kind of balanced and would take air through the short path and the long path around the same rate. Um, this air heater also used a double walled polycarbonate glazing and uh, seems to be a little bit stronger and more robust than the single wall uh, polycarbonate that I got from Home Depot. 
I learned from the first one that you got to plug the holes when you do your hole saw cutting or you get sawdust and aluminum dust everywhere all through your collector. So uh, this is just one of the ways that I did that. And on the other third prototype, you'll see uh, some other ways that I block the holes. Okay, so I'm up on the staging here and uh, I'm just drilling the holes with the six inch hole saw for the solar air heater. I've got the uh, top of the radiator all blocked off with this little sheet of aluminum here. It's just to keep all the crap from getting down inside the air heater. I got one more hip, one more little hole to drill right here, and uh, and I'll be inside the house. And then I just have to knock the gyp rock holes out, and we'll be good to go. I just wanted you to see uh, this section because every air heater has to be, in my house at least, custom built to fit the studs and to fit the kind of space between the windows and, and the edges of the, uh, the building. And it's all kind of custom and super complicated. So to the left of the last window is our bathroom. And that's where I decided to put the third prototype. And this prototype was using the aluminum downspout uh, design method. And what I was trying to do with this particular prototype was to enhance the amount of air space that the air had to travel when it was inside of the collector. So in the first two collectors, I was attempting to try to maximize the amount of distance that the air was traveling through the collector by making the air travel through as much tube as I could possibly get it to go through before it came back out the exit fan. And while they were pretty successful, I feel like they could have been uh, done better. And with this design, what I was trying to do was to allow for a double pass style air collector where the air traveled down in behind the aluminum downspouts and entered the aluminum downspouts at the bottom and came up through all of the aluminum downspouts allowing for full use of the front of the radiator and also kind of working with natural convection so the cold air would go into the back of the radiator and get pulled down by the fan and then it would get heated up inside of the tubes on the way coming back up and it would actually heat on the way down uh, taking some of the heat off the back of the aluminum downspout tubes but for the most part uh, they would they wouldn't be fighting uh, heat on the way down as they were in the first two collectors okay so we're inside and this is the working part of the solar air heater you can see I've got two uh, vents punched through the wall the one on the right has the backdraft damper which those little louvers kind of open up and then when the air stops moving they close preventing any kind of thermal siphoning and then on the other side this is where the hot air comes out of and that's just a small six inch uh, inline duct booster fan the whole thing's hooked up to this temperature control unit which is plugged in runs in through cable in there which is inside the solar air heater so the air heater has been running consistently for about 20-30 minutes now and you can see that it's it's holding somewhere around 40 degrees 41 degrees celsius which is quite a bit warmer than this room right now and because we're going to get another couple hours of sun i'm expecting this room should heat up quite well it should also push hot air right through the rest of the house so out of the three prototypes, I would say that the aluminum downspout uh, makes a superior type of design just because of the fact that you can really pack the uh, air channels in tightly, creating a real radiator style uh, vent tube array, essentially. And so I was able to move a lot more air through this style of air heater. Uh, because the air can move down and behind it, can come up in through it, and virtually move through unobstructed uh, and allow me to move a lot of air quickly with a very small fan. So these fans use 15 watts, 
uh, and, and have virtually no amperage. So this thing could run all day on virtually no power and it's quite efficient. <clears throat> the tubes that I used in the first two prototypes were essentially uh, leftovers that I had had from the first time that I did some solar air heating projects where I was basing the prototypes on the solar uh, air heaters that are designed with pop cans and beer cans and uh, I thought well I could probably make a better version of that with these stretched out tubes so I bought a whole bunch of the tubes and I thought well I should at least try and, and perfect that design so that's how prototype 1 and 2 came about this prototype was based on some current trends in the world of solar air heater design, the do-it-yourself stuff, and uh, is you know kind of a bit of a hybrid with the the uh, double pass method. So it I think has a lot of potential, and uh, I hope you found this video useful. And good luck with your own projects.